and in fact 700 to 800 million liters of sewage and effluent is carried through these waterways every day sorry <coughs> Okay, this is actually uh, river Coombe uh, in a dry season. This is actually dry season, and uh, you will see, you know, the the Coombe River is uh, full of water. In in fact, uh, the Coombe River is uh, is actually about as uh, it, it used to really feed 75 small tanks, and the river used to feed 75 small tanks, and it provided irrigation once. It provided irrigation to 75, uh, some, some 15, 16 villages, and it runs uh, the distance of about 65 kilometers. And in Chennai alone, in, it runs to a distance of something like 18 kilometers. And, uh, and uh, this once uh, uh, was a fishing river and boat racing, everything used to, I believe, take place in uh, Kuom. Today, it is in this kind of a pathetic situation. Now, this is, look at, uh, this is a Buckingham Canal. The Buckingham Canal again is a, is a, a man-made. It's a 422 kilometers long, and it was uh, actually constructed uh, dug during the British period. That is in 18. The work started in 1806. This was basically a navigation canal. In those days when we had no transport system, British wanted to do the navigation of uh, you know uh, transporting rice and uh, animal feed and uh, textiles and all that from Andhra Pradesh, somewhere in Vijayawada, and went up to Chidambaram town in Tamil Nadu to a distance of uh, 422 kilometers. It was a fantastic canal. It's a very good navigation canal and, uh, and named after Buckingham Palace. Today, this is the state of the condition. Look at those pictures. And on, the, on your left hand side, right hand side, you will see that it's, a, it's something like you know, um, 100 meters Buckingham Canal is reduced to 15, 20 meters because they have now constructed what is called MRTP, Mass Rapid Transport System. You'll see on top of that, you find uh, uh, trains uh, going. And uh, then it is reduced, and then it is, uh, it is nothing but sewage. On both sides, you've got uh, slums, people live there. And then you've got uh, the sewage, carry, it's, carry, it's carrying the sewage. And, uh, and, and then people live there. And Chennai has got a 40 per, the total of uh, about something like 8 or 9 million population, 40% constitute slums. And most of them occupy both sides of the waterways. Um, this is uh, uh, another view of the Buckingham Canal. You can, this, is, this is probably you know, not encroach. You see the width of it is so, so big. And uh, this is actually the Coombe River. And uh, this is the Coombe River in 1925. This is the present Coombe River. This is just to give you a comparative picture. Where people used to do the navigation through boats. They take all the, the transport, the transport, all that. And uh, that's the railway station, the central railway station. This is the present Coombe River. And they try to do some kind of uh, cleaning up through the, uh, the, uh, the through government of India resources. But unfortunately, this, this is just a kind of uh, you know, namesake they do. And uh, the, the third one is the Adair River. Adair River is a beautiful river. It's uh, actually is a very large number of trees and it, it, it used to be a kind of a, a walker's paradise. And uh, once, and uh, I must be knowing, and uh, the, the, that one on the left, uh, left hand side is, the, is, the, is the, uh, where the river ends with the Bay of Bengal. And uh, this, one, this one also, but then it is dry. It's all uh, carrying the effluent. And uh, this is also, uh, the, on, on, uh, the one on the below is also carrying all the municipal, municipal sewage and effluent. It is all completely polluted, contributing to heavy uh, groundwater contamination. And uh, this is the, this also Adair River during the monsoon months. Look at the, uh, the extent of water that it carries. All these waterways are the flood carriers. That's a very important uh, issue uh, which I wanted to emphasize. Because these, these river waterways are now uh, narrowed down or silted up, during the heavy flood season, the entire city is flooded. In the last week, 10 days ago, due to heavy rainfall during monsoon months, the entire city was flooded. The entire city was flooded. In fact, uh, this picture was taken at that time. So look at the kind of a water that it carries. And so much water. I mean, if these waterways are you know, maintained properly, city cannot have any kind of water problem. Although in the media and <coughs> elsewhere, it is being talked about that Chennai is the thir thirstiest city in, the, in India. Unfortunate. That is an unfortunate statement. Chennai city's annual rainfall is 1,250 millimeters. How can you how can you be so thirsty? The stupid water governance you have, St myopic policies. That is the reason why you, you, you are so thirsty. It is not because you don't have the water. And uh, and this is actually uh, a study conducted by the Asian Development Bank. 
study conducted in 1994. This gives you information about all the major rivers carrying the uh, pollution load. This is where, in fact, I was uh, trying to tell Professor Ayer, uh, I cannot even uh, find one good river, including Tamaraparani. Ayer was saying that the one on your uh, extreme right, Tamaraparani, used to be a b b good river. No, even there, you got a sterilite and a large number of other chemical units in Tutikorin have come up. All of them use Tamaraparani as a dumping yard. <coughs> even there, you got the pollution. You got to look at the TSS and TDS and the chloride, sulfide everywhere, you know, all the... And the I, I would like... I, I want you to see um, the, uh, the this particular one, the last column. This is the most dangerous pollutant. It's called cyanide. Look at the cyanide uh, uh, load uh, to uh, the, 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 the Madras, 19 kilograms, the Madras River, 19 kilograms of cyanide is dumped every day. And in the Pala River is the worst, 22 kilograms of cyanide is dumped into the Pala River every day, 22 kilograms, and so also in other rivers. 15 in Kaveri. Yeah, 15 in Kaveri. It's a huge river, it's okay. But a Pala is such a small river, carrying 22 uh, kilograms of cyanide every day, that is why it's at the top of the world. So, so much is the pollution load. And then uh, you might want to ask, you know, what is happening to our policies and common effluent treatment and so on. We have so many common effluent treatment plants. In Palar, we got 22. In Noyal Basin, we got 8. In Bhavani, we got 4. Amaravati, we got 8. In other river basins, we got 14. We got so many common effluent treatment plants and uh, the, the, there are so many beneficiary units. And quantity of effluent uh, uh, supposed to be treated there is so much. But unfortunately, none of these treatments are uh, actually designed to treat, for instance, heavy metals and the TDS, common salt. To treat your common salt, you need RO system. If you have RO system, it will be very expensive. Therefore, these treatment, uh, treatment plants are designed only to satisfy the Supreme Court. Otherwise, these are uh, you know kind of a toy plants which, uh, which exist which is, which is of no use, which is of no significance. That is why our pollution uh, um, remains. Now, I've got some questions before I finish. Now, is it impossible to sustain industrialization and urbanization development without compromising with our rivers and water resources? It's very important for us to ask. We need industrialization. We need urbanization. Both are very important. You can't put a reverse gear to urbanization process. And you cannot say that we don't want industrialization. We need industries also. But is it impossible to, uh, you know, go along with the, on the development path without compromising on our environment? Is it so difficult? Why is that our development is unsustainable? On the contrary to what the neoclassical economists argue, why does the market turn out to be a mute spectator, contributing to more and more environmental ecological damages rather than cleaning up the mess? See, neoclassical argue, uh, economists argue, market takes care of everything. Don't worry about it. I'm sure the existing government today, the government of India also, is uh, following the same policy. Market is everywhere and market should take care of everything. Why is it our market is not taking care of this pollution mess, environmental mess, ecological mess? If ecology misfires, you and I cannot survive. That day is not too far away. We can't bear the ecology backfires. Should we wait until such time? If ecology backfires, there's going to be huge epidemic everywhere. In Chennai, it might happen. It might happen in the Gangetic Plains. It might, it might happen anywhere. You just, you just have to wait for the doomsday. If that day happens, what's the point in making up that time? Therefore, I think we should wake up, take it up as a wake-up call. And now, what are the ways forward? Do we have a way forward at all? The role of pollution control boards. We've got laws. We've got a large number of laws. In fact, India is one country where the laws are quite a, quite a large in number. And therefore, we have also set up the pollution control board Central Pollution Control Board, and every state has got a Pollution Control Board set up in 1981. And then, what is the role of laws? PAL is, is one solution. Public interest litigation cases are filed. Some are taken seriously by the semi court. A large number of them have been dismissed. And if none of these work, none of these work as a matter of fact, I told you, if none of these work, what is the way out? Or is there a deadlock? Is there a deadlock? Or where do you, how, how do you proceed further? Or it is the curse of the democracy such that we have to live with it? Or is it the curse of our democracy? Or lastly, I would like to ask you also, can we renegotiate our democracy? Is there a case for renegotiating our democracy? Our democracy is bad at the moment. Everybody is taken for granted, and then it's not, the democracy is not for the common man. So can we renegotiate the democracy? If yes, what are the ways? So this is what I really wanted to tell you and for you to think about. Thank you. Thank you.